I never do this. I checked out a short. I did a short. I've been posting shorts on uh, on YouTube lately, um, a lot more frequently. And um, I don't know if you've seen one where I posted from Alan West, where a young lady was getting raw with him, <laughs> raw. Like she pulled out her attitudious girl, mm -hmm, neck shaking. You know, she might as well have been snapping her fingers and all that. But after I checked it out, I said, I need to see if this comes from a, um, um, a longer video, a bigger video, because I had to. I found it. I found mm, mm. And I waited for y'all to check this joint out. We're about to check this joint out together. Because the first video that I checked out, the short, the sh was simply from another short. And I was like, hey, this is wow. This lady got an attitude, young girl at that. And we got the raw, man, I know he's going to give her the business because she came at him raw. Oh, man, she about to get it. I can't wait. Oh, I can't wait. Do you identify as black? <laughs> no, it's a serious question because you might not identify. Can you please put the mic? Thank you. Do you identify as black? <laughs> now, I'm guessing that she's asking him this because he must be a conservative. <laughs> And as soon as you're a black man who's a conservative, it's like, oh, this brother must not be a brother. Mm, looking at you, I see the darkness, but uh, is that really a brother? Oh no, are you a brother? <laughs> huh, brother? <laughs> I don't know what people's issues are, man, but this is hilarious to me. I don't know, I just take all this, okay. Do you identify as black? Okay, here we go. No, it's a serious question because you might not identify. Can you please put the mic? Thank you. Oh, see? Okay. Uh, when I Less walked into, when I walked into the question. room, I am I not done with my question. Whoa. Whoa. That's the part. You see his face right there? It's like, look, girl, if you don't... Sh he, had to, he had to remind himself of where he was right there. Because more than likely, he has a daughter her age or older. I know I do. And he's like, whoa, 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 young lady. That energy. Back it down a little bit. You're speaking to a man of character, of integrity, of authority. Fall back. Unless I raise my voice to you, you're definitely not going to raise your voice at me. Look at his face right there. Oh, my gosh. Hold on. You might not identify. Can you please put the mic? Thank you. Okay. Uh, when I Less walked into, when I walked into the question. room, I am I not done with my question. Oh, 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 oh. Hey, young lady, young lady. I, I'm just asking you to listen to me. While and and, I, and I'm question. about to answer okay. the first question. But I didn't, I didn't finish my question. Okay. Wow. Yeah, I'm black. Less than nine percent of the people wow. in this room are black, and we're all not here for you. Do okay. you think there are racial inequalities in America? And how do you feel about Trump increasing both economic inequality and discrimination for people of, people of color and LGBTQ people? What about violence against marginalized people in the United States? Can you talk about that? Oh my gosh. Well, the, the subject was about you know national security and foreign oh, policy. Lord. But I will tell you that uh, I think in the minority community, in the black community, I think they're pretty happy that unemployment isn't at an all-time low in the United States of America for Hispanic and black communities, and, and that's the truth. As a matter of fact, overall unemployment is an all-time low. So if you want to break the, uh, the pay gap or racial inequality gap, the most important thing is my parents taught me, who were black, born and raised down south, was about equality of opportunity and not equality of outcomes. I would challenge you to read the book by a black man. <laughs> in school of this young lady. <laughs> Both of my parents, who were black, just in case you want to ask them that, and then you got all aggressive on the microphone and asked that dumbass question the way that you did. But I'm going to go ahead and I'm, I'm going to answer it. I'm going to answer it. But this ain't what you want. And you're about to see it. <laughs> of opportunity and not equality of outcomes. I would challenge you to read the book by a black man by the name of Booker T. Washington called Up From Slavery. Okay? That's funny. Because W.E. E. Du Bois is much better at describing uh, the racial inequalities in America well, well, that you are denying that happen now. 
She said W.E.B. Du Bois is much better. He said, I, I want you to read a book by Booker T. Washington. She said W.E.B. Du Bois is much better. And then she started trying to go back and forth with him. Okay, this is about to be good. I'm not going to stop too much, I promise. Okay. That's funny. Because W.E.B. Du Bois is much better at uh, describing the racial inequalities in America well, well. that you are denying that happen now. And to say that, like, we are better and unemployment is down is dismissing the fact that a lot of LGBTQ people are in trouble right now because of your administration. And a oh, lot of I'm black not people, in the administration. I'm just a guy. I mean, here. you are you are supporting <laughs> I mean, the administration, though, aren't you? I'm not speaking for the administration. Oh, I mean, okay. Sorry, you were, I didn't know that. I, yeah, you I'm did just say a private a lot of citizen. I'm just Joe Sixpack. Okay, I have a second question. I'm sorry for my tone. <laughs> I'm just Previously, so Joe Sixpack. That's okay. I have two daughters. They talk to me like that. <laughs> Thank you. Um, if she wasn't just frustrated. She's entitled. You are entitled, and you are ignorant, young lady. You need to learn how to control yourself. Um, you need to learn how to respect one another, I mean, respect people, um, show people the type of love that you'll like to receive in return. And guess what? Life is going to teach you that. Life is going to teach you that. Um, you're going to get tired of blasting on people and then apologize. Then doing it again and apologizing. Then realizing that you're not gaining favor with anyone. You're going to realize that you're, um, that, that you, that you're being ostracized. That people are starting to look at you in a certain type of way. And then you're going to start blaming them because that's what you want to do right now. You don't even have the mindset to look within and take accountability right now. So, like Jordan B. Peterson says, you need to make up your own bed. Until you look within, you can't look without. You can't, you can't look outside. You can't help the rest of the, the black community of this or the LGBTQ community without helping yourself first. I hope somebody send this to this young lady and she and she sees it because it's it's necessary to understand that <clears throat> none of us know it all. The more we think we know is the less we know. Life teaches us that. And you're speaking with great authority. And then when you want to come and ask another question, you come with humility, with your with your shoulders over, and you're looking down, and apologizing. Oh, I was a little too aggressive. I apologize. I apologize. Oh hell nah. And I and I knew that he knew he heard one of he heard one of his daughters yelling at him when you yelled at him. The the disrespect. Apologize for the disrespect. How about that? <laughs> My question but is... But I cut them off with their allowance. <laughs> well, you don't have that ability here. I know, I know. <laughs> um, um, my question is about national security, because I do feel like the, um, the KKK and white nationalists are threats to black individuals at, uh, in the United States. There have been multiple shootings recently within the last 10 years, and there have been an increase of violence against black people and I wanted to know if you think that that's a national security issue and how you would address that. Yeah, I think it's a national security issue right here in the south side of Chicago where you have a combat zone going on and Rahm Emanuel and everyone just seems to not care or as well as in Baltimore or other places. And that's black on black crime. That's and Washington, D.C. specifically. A whole lot of people are dying in Washington, D.C. Where I am right now. Well, I'm still in Washington. I'm in DMV area, but yeah. So it's happening everywhere. And... No one wants to talk about that. We only want to talk about the talking points that are going to divide us more. Um, and guess what? The police out there who are shooting people and being sucker ass suckers because they're afraid to do their jobs and they're shooting people without proper cause. F all of them because they are some punks and they don't deserve to have a badge. They don't deserve to be out there protecting and serving anything. But there are great numbers of good police out there. Good cops. See, we are so set up on this daggone system. Like when slaves got away, they hired a certain group of people to go chase them down. And they became the police. It's ingrained in the program. But that's a, so now when I walk down the street, who I'm afraid of is not the person that just now shot my best friend. Not the person that just now, um, just now robbed me on the way, um, on the way to school like a week ago. I'm not looking over my shoulder for him. 
I'm looking over my shoulder for police that I heard shot somebody um, out in out in Louisiana or, or put it and put they put their knee on somebody until they like so we we pull out one for every 50 killings between from black on black crime we pull out one killing from a day on police they kill somebody and we want to march on that that shows your immaturity <laughs> But I'm gonna let my man go ahead and take care of this, man. This is this is him. That's not KKK or whatever. What about but, white on black crime? I'm well, sorry, but that's that's what I was asking. Okay. Well, then, have you ever heard of Margaret Sanger? You can't just give one example. For well, Mar one. she don't know who Margaret Sanger is, and when she, when he when he asked her that, that would be awesome. But she don't realize that she's playing checkers and he's playing chess. Okay. The, when he asked her that right there, she didn't know what the hell was about to happen, but he about to lay it on her. other places. And that's black on black crime. That's not KKK or whatever. But what about but, white on black crime? Here we go. I'm sorry, but that's, that's what I was asking. Here we go. Okay. Well, then, have you ever heard of Margaret Sanger? You can't just give one example. For well, Mar Mar Margaret Sanger and the organization that she founded uh, since 1973, almost 17 million unborn black babies have been murdered by that organization. I think that's something that we should really be concerned about. The fact that the United States government gives $568.7 million to an organization that was founded by a white supremacist, a racist, a person that uh, spoke at Klan rallies, that referred to blacks as undesirables and weeds, I would join forces with you in a heartbeat to say that we need to cut off funding to an organization like that called Planned Parenthood. That 50... She ain't know that was coming. Well, I don't think we give taxpayer money to the Ku Klux Klan. <laughs> Well, I, not targeted by the I, 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 well, yeah, they have. <laughs> white, the FBI goes after white supremacist organizations. But then I would ask you, why is it that why is it that nobody goes after Antifa? I mean, I think Antifa is also a domestic terrorist organization. I mean, look at what they have done at uh, certain colleges and universities to prevent people from going out there and uh, freely speaking. So uh, let's let's call let's call a ball a ball and a strike a strike. And so there are many organizations out there that. that we need to be targeting. But I will tell you, first and foremost, you shouldn't give $568.7 million to an organization like that. And if you do some research, I think between 50 to 55% of Planned Parenthood clinics are in black communities. That's a travesty. See, that's why I'm not out on the street with a microphone asking no questions. So what do you think about the, so what do you think about this? <laughs> but what about this? Nah, I'm not ready for that. <laughs> and young lady, neither were you. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm not trying to be mean, but you you just, you, um, mentally, you wasn't. Your maturity level is not there yet. It's not your fault. Yes, it is. <laughs> yes, it is, because you decided to, um, go down the path you're going and 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 fully buy into the information you're being fed and not having any direct connections to anything that you're out there on the front lines fighting for but you feel like you know it all so hey godspeed godspeed everyone else man what y'all thought about that let me know in the comments below and if you have yet to hit that subscribe button or you didn't share it yet please make sure you do so and you out the door once again guys i'm van and now we are all the lfr family and I look forward to seeing you on the next video, hopefully inside the Patreon as well. I got two mics because this one is right here. This is for the outro right here. This is for the outro. All right? Love y'all, man. See y'all next time.